Thank you for joining me for another ITY video. Today I am at the Tech Leaders Conference and I have with me Bogdan Botezatu. He is from Bitdefender and he's a senior e-threat analyst. And so Bogdan, please tell us a little bit about Bitdefender for those who don't know and uh, what, what you do as, a, as an e-threat analyst. We're a software-based company in uh, Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. in Romania. Uh, we have been around for like late 90s. Mm -hmm. We've been developing anti-malware security solutions. And uh, as a senior threat analyst, my job is mostly to predict where things are going to, what's going to be the next issue that people will confront with, how we should mitigate these threats, mm -hmm. what products are needed on the market to make some sense, and uh, how do we protect users from things that are not there yet. Now, um, there's obviously you have an internet security suite, um, is that Bitdefender Internet Security 2015? Yes, it has been released last year in April and uh, it has been recently awarded the product of the year in terms of security. We have topped detection mm -hmm. and uh, it's been in use by about 500 million people around the world. And um, now also late last year you released a free adware tool. Uh, which, you know, I mean, we, people know about Malwarebytes and they know about Hitman Pro. How has your tool gone? And how, so how, how successful has it been? Well, it has been very successful because now everything is powered by adware. Mm. And uh, it, it's being, adware is being uh, marketed as a thing that brings convenience to users. Yeah. But if you're asking a user, they're not quite happy when their browsers are hijacked, when their browsers are injected with different offers. So yeah, we, we've seen a lot of traction coming from the users a lot of interest for for this tool and in the light of what happened like yesterday with Lenovo yeah. sure uh, once again people have learned that spyware and adware can be very hard to remove manually so they have to rely on an automatic tool to do the job sure I mean even television is adware because it's ads every few minutes people hate that like to fast forward so why we put it up with it on our computers I don't know, but we do because unfortunately sometimes the advertising is the way you pay for content. But the way that Lenovo did it was, or rather Superfish, to be uh, analyzing things and to be breaking into SSL connections as was reported. It's obviously um, unusual but and, and, and unappreciated. And of course Lenovo has backed down and apologized and said they're never going to do it again. But with all the different devices out there, smartphones and tablets and baby monitors and smart TVs and the Internet of Things, Clearly not everything can have software loaded onto it. So you have in your hands there, it's not a deck of cards, it's not a tiny Apple TV. Tell us tell us what it is. This is the newest product in our portfolio. It's called the Bitdefender Box. And it's the industry's first approach at delivering a hardware-based security solution for the consumer. Now, hardware-based security solution has been around for like seven, eight years, but it was only targeted at enterprises, uh, people who could afford to pay ten thousand fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars uh, a unit and who could actually install it because it requires a lot of technical skill to deploy it and yeah. of course it wouldn't look pretty nice in a living room you know mm -hmm. it's a device this big yeah um, so uh, we have shrunk it uh, made it very user friendly for for the regular consumer and we packed it with all the technologies that the Bitdefender products have gathered in here mm -hmm. and developed. Um, this box sits next to your router, it plugs into your router and scans all the internet traffic regardless of where it goes. Mm -hmm. For instance, it can protect your smartphone as well as your laptop, your PC device, your Mac, MacBook, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the IPTV cameras, smart fridges, whatever you're, you're running in your network. It doesn't care what operating system they're running as long as it's plugged in, plugged into the router and that device connects to the router it is secure so what are the two ports at the back there these two ports are uh, the ethernet ports that allow the box to connect to the router yep. or to the internet service provider uh, if you choose the internet service provider jack uh, the box magically transforms itself into a router it offers wireless and a wired port mm -hmm. here uh, but if you want to use it in conjunction with a router, you just plug it here into your router and you have no extra security setups to make for that router to work. So, so how does it secure, like if you've already got devices connecting to that router's, your existing router's Wi-Fi, 
how does this this get in to protect that traffic? I mean, normally the way people would imagine a filter to work, a bit like an ADSL filter. You've got the modem, you've got the router, and this sits in between. But that's not how this works. The router is configured by the box on the first run yeah. automatically, and it will forward data packets towards the box. The box analyzes them and sends them back to the router. Did you have to get the knowledge of every single router on the planet to make it work automatically? or Yes, how is it uh, we intend this box to be a very user-friendly product. So in order to configure the box to work with the router, some settings needs to need to be applied to the router. Yeah. But we don't we wouldn't like the user to do that because it's painful well, and I've had to go do port forwarding and other things in a router and it's yeah it's painful. It, it's tech stuff <laughs> that people might get wrong and yeah. uh, might cause issues. So we have analyzed all the routers in the world, learned how they work so we can apply these settings by ourselves. And does that mean that when you set this box up you have to tell it your router's username and password? Sure. Yeah. So then, but once you've done it, then it knows, goes, makes the changes for you. Does it keep your router's firmware up to date or warn you that it's out of date? Not yet, but, but you're this is a it. feature that we're sleeping on yeah. because it's very important that users have the latest firmware. Well, they, they never, they just don't do it. The users just don't do it, the average user. Until something doesn't work, the router doesn't work, and then I go to their house and they say, how come it's, not, how come it's dropping off all the time? Well, let's have a look. Oh, you haven't updated it for two years. <laughs> the router is not quite a very user-friendly no. appliance because you don't directly interact with it. It doesn't have an update button no. in some kind of interface. You need to download the firmware manually, upload it on the router, and then run the risk of having it break in yeah. case something goes, goes wrong. wrong. That's right. But does your box update itself automatically? Yes, the box updates itself automatically. You have a checkbox in the... Uh, mobile application that manages the box. Uh, if you set it on update automatically, it's always going to download its latest firmware and in install itself. Can you just hold up the package, the, the external packaging right there, just so people can see. It says the box. There we go. Actually, just pass it. I'll hold it closer here to the screen. So you can see it's called the box, Bitdefender box. And on the back here, you can see some nice, I'm sorry, I'm blocking Bogdan there for a second. We can see the enjoy the internet of good things, which is very clever. Now this you said it is coming to the US uh, in the first or second quarter of this year. Um, be how much? One hundred ninety nine for the box. Uh, the box is going to be one hundred ninety nine with one year of subscription included. Mm -hmm. After that, users renew their subscription for only ninety nine dollars. But it's all you can eat security because uh, unlike traditional antiviruses that need one license per seat, this uh, this box will take care of all the devices that are connected to your network for the same price. So, and it works with as many devices as your current router can support, which for most people is quite a few, and they, you know, people have many phones and tablets and devices, so that's basically a household's worth of devices. It's great for a family because you have the spouse's devices, the kid's devices, uh, baby the monitors, internet fridges, media center, uh, Xbox console, yeah. whatever you, you, you're you running in a, in a home. Yeah. And it also makes deployment easier because you're not wasting time installing individual antivirus on each and every machine, but you're, you're just plug in, plugging it once and that's it. Yeah, and now obviously you still recommend that if a device can have Bitdefender installed onto it or some other internet security software that that device, especially if it's mobile, should have something installed on there. But if you've got a device sitting at home, like a games console or something that only ever stays at home, this box will actually protect against viruses and other things. Yes, definitely. And when is it due in Australia? Uh, we're looking at late 2015 after we have carried the first wave of tests, uh, but we don't have any nailed date to the no. Yeah, but hopefully this year sometime. And then. Those other prices you mentioned were US prices. Definitely, because Australia is one of our biggest markets and we're seeing great adoption of Internet of Things devices here. So we are, we are, we are very eager to bring it on, on the Australian sure. market. And I guess most of the routers would be global models from D-Link or Netgear, whoever it might be. So if you've, if you've got um, those routers already configured, I mean, you don't, I mean, do you have people here testing routers already in Australia in preparation for the box or, or, or is it all done back in Romania? We do all the development in Romania, so we, we're going to have our people in Romania looking into the Australian routers. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, it sounds like an excellent box. I remember 
TPG at the time, and TPG, Trend Micro two or three years ago had some sort of box, but I don't remember what's happened to it. I don't hear about it anymore. And then when I heard your box, it's like, hey, someone's doing this idea again for consumers. So, um, uh, and is it already on in use in Romania or the, the US is going to be la where it launches first? We have a couple of test units that we're running at home. Yeah. So I've been running the box for about six weeks, now, mm -hmm. six months now, and uh, I've never go back to anything else. And is there a, like a log that you can look up through a browser page or through your smartphone or tablet so that you can see the report of what it's protected yes, you from? Yes, uh, the mobile application, Yeah, uh, I'm going to show you if you want, Yeah, yeah. Uh, does it, keeps, does it... a, keeps a log of who connected to your internet uh, router, mm -hmm. uh, how many devices you've had, how many gigabytes of data you've consumed yeah. over 24 hours, uh, and how many incidents have been reporting, reported from the clients connected to the network. And so I can see on the box, back of the box here it's for iOS and Google Play. Yes. The apps. Is there any parental controls in the box? Uh, not yet, but we're looking into that uh, because the box is a modular architecture. Uh, think of it like the leg of technology. Mm -hmm. uh, you can add modules very easily once you've got the platform matured and stable. So we're now at this point in which everything is working very well but we're looking at new features that might be useful for our customers sure. for the next release. Yep. Okay, so you've got a screenshot there or something? or Right away. Yeah. <laughs> the internet is not our friend. Oh, well, we're, we're at, a, at a conference where sometimes the internet can be slow. And so what about uh, the for all those um, Windows Mobile or Windows Phone users who say, where's, where's the Windows Phone app? Are you working on it for them too? No, we're not looking at the Windows Phone app anytime soon. Um, this is. There we go. I'll just I'll, I'll just bring it here so you can see. I'll see if I can zoom in there. Well, not zoom, but yeah, zoom. There's a bit of zoom. Daily report, software update, new device, new device, new device. And you see the software update you've mentioned before. Yep, it's available for your device. And can I tap history, or is that sure. secret? Yes, I tap history there. And box is up to date. Dangerous website blocked. Dangerous website blocked. And I you suppose also I... see which device in your household has encountered that threat and who's actually that device belong to sure yeah well that, that, and and i guess if if something managed to if some mal malware managed to get on you know some maybe the box was wasn't it was some sort of new zero day the box didn't know about it or couldn't protect it you, you would see if if that device is suddenly doing weird things yes. you would be warned that hey there's activity that wasn't happening there before if a computer has been infected before the box was deployed for instance and it would start exchanging information with the command and control center yeah. we would be able to intercept that traffic and alert the user that there is an issue with one of their devices have you seen already hackers or cyber criminals trying to hack into the box your uh, box? No, but we have our own dedicated team of trying to hack reverse into. engineers yeah. trying to hack into the box. They, they are part of the red team, yep. the, the the team that tries to find out vulnerabilities before before, before the, the cyber criminals do. before it is even <laughs> launched. Because yeah. one of our core components, when, when the core pillar of this box was security, it was built with security in mind, not with networking in mind. That's what makes it stand out. So if a, if a Lenovo user had bought your box and they already would have had Superfish on there, I mean, would this have told them they had Superfish there? We would have seen uh, malformed traffic between the user and their uh, the command and control centers, the, the, the servers that served ads. But other than that, we, we couldn't do anything because the uh, laptop had already, already there, been infected. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, would you have alerted the user to say, hey, there's something happening here. There's something Malicious happening. traffic detected yeah. on your network. And then you would um, have to run the Bitdefender adware removal tool or run, run some software, whatever it might be. Sure, yeah, yeah. it's a plausible scenario. Sure. Now, a couple of questions. We're talking about Lenovo. Uh, I was at the Ashton Kutcher event the other day and, he, and, and people who've watched my videos know that all of a sudden I'm asking these two questions because of Ashton Kutcher. And one of his questions was, what was the best piece of advice that you were ever given that has gotten you where you are today? And there's another one which I'll ask in a sec. <laughs> uh, Probably lots of things well, that you've been... Uh, lots of advice. Uh, never do something today that you might leave for tomorrow because right. tomorrow you, you might never, you might not need to do it. <laughs> yeah, or you might not be here or you might already be infected by then. But that's a good piece of advice. And then the other question he always used to ask was what was your your hack when you were in high school, your hustle, or what was something when you were younger 
that really you know you could you did that could help you out to be uh, uh, get an advantage over life I think that my biggest achievement when I was young was the fact that I always treated computers as important although everybody would tell me at that time that there was no way you could make a living out of tinkering with computers yeah <laughs> well they were wrong weren't they yeah <laughs> definitely otherwise I wouldn't be 10,000 miles away from home that's it that's giving it. an interview to you <laughs> absolutely and just a couple of very final questions uh, you know, what does the crystal ball look like for malware and for the security business over the next 12 months and say the next five to 10 years? Obviously, you know, we'll, be ha we'll, we'll have, we will have we might have brain chips by then we want to protect from infection. That's a very valid point, actually. It looks like it's something that's never going to happen, but I presume that the biggest thing that's going to happen, maybe not in a nine month time frame, yeah. but definitely in the next year, will be ransomware targeting medical implants. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had friends targeted by ransomware, and they sadly they had to pay the ransom because they you, they, you, they you needed can, the data. They... You can do without the, the data, right? Yeah. So in the worst case, you you can ditch that data and start all over. But sure. when your your medical implant, your heart yeah, is yeah. held at ransom, there's no other way than to pay. So, do you have any final messages for ITY viewers and readers, and for your current and potential customers? Stay safe. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you later.